Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're taking a look at the brand new Transformers War for Cybertron Generation Selects number 22. This is Black Rorichi. This oddly named Decepticon is actually a Japanese original character from the Headmasters line, and he was the pack-in partner to Black Zarek, who was a retool of Scorponok. So Black Rorichi is naturally a redeco and even slight retool of Fast Track from Earthrise. He's done up in a primarily gold color. Hopefully this time uh, not as prone to break apart as the original. And his inclusion is pretty fitting because he, like Fast Track, can turn into the Tyrant Spear, which was the weapon of choice for Black Zarek. Now, a lot of people got excited when this guy was revealed because we thought maybe, uh, you know, Black Zarek retool from Scorponok was on the way. So far, we haven't seen anything on it yet, but you never know. Hasbro or Takara might come through for us. So, if you guys see my reviews before, you know this goes. We're going to take a look at the packaging, as plain and repetitive as it is. Then we'll open it up, we'll look at what's inside, we'll see the instructions, and then we'll see Black Rorichi himself in his vehicle, weaponizer, robot modes, all that stuff. Naturally, I'll be doing some group shots and comparisons today, and then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So the box is exactly what you'd expect. Same old Generation Selects. Got the name on the label here. Legal stuff, logo, wraparound picture, nada. So... Nothing new on this front. Okay, I've gone and cut the label. So we'll open this up. Typical inner lining for Wolf for Cybertron stuff. Here's Rorichi himself, and oh, he's a lot shinier than I thought he was. That's good. I like the way he looks. Yeah, the promo photos don't do him justice. He's really just blinging. I like that. Here's the instructions. There's a little piece of paper. I know it's hiding here somewhere. There it is. I hate this thing. Just more garbage to throw away. All right, so here we go. You get the render of him on the front, his name, all that. Shows you how to store his weapons. And then we get his transformation from robot to vehicle. His um, like base mode, kind of, sort of. Just airlock connection. And then how to disassemble him into his little bits and pieces, how to do the Tyrant Spear, and how to do his weaponizer mode. So the instructions, as far as I can tell, are pretty much exactly the same as Fast Tracks. Though I... Oh, look. <laughs> they have a little exhaust using the Tyrant Spear instead of Scorponok. I mean, it makes sense. They want to plug more Selects toys in here, but that looks kind of funny. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that one. Maybe. We'll see. That's going to be very stable, too. Okay, here's Black Rorichi's vehicle mode. And I have to say, this really dark gold or bronze-like plastic really brings me back to the heyday of, like, the late 80s, early 90s Transformers when they were using plastics that look that color. It's also, obviously, incredibly troubling for those of us that have had our figures crumble to pieces. I uh, really hope they got that formula worked out because, I mean, this looks exactly like those toys. It's very worrisome. Like, definitely, like, Euro G1 or, like, Beast Wars era colors. And it freaks me out a little bit, not gonna lie. But we'll save that concern for when it actually happens. I do want to say that the vehicle mode ends up looking... A bit more cohesive without the dark gray to orange clash of uh, Fast Track. And, you know, it rolls well. Everything works the way it's supposed to. So that's always good. Cannons can still point whichever way you want them to. Tolerances feel good in this when it comes to the little arms. You can still use this little blade weapon thing as a seat for a Titan Master. So we can take a figure like, say, Zarek the headmaster or titan master of Scorponok. Very fitting, right? Plug him on here like so. Purples kind of match up a bit. And you can just have him drive this thing around. And it looks pretty cool. I think their colors work a lot better together than, you know, Scorponok and Fast Track, but that's besides the point. And yeah, again, it's a weird placement for a seat, right? Like imagine sitting so far back on a vehicle you're riding, but better than nothing. 
You always got to appreciate backwards compatibility with a line that's like, what, four lines back now in Generations? For comparison, here is Fast Track. And you can't see much of the molding difference in this mode. It just looks like they're different colors, but since the heads do show a little bit, you get a bit of a sneak peek at the retooling on the head, which we'll look more closely at in robot mode. But these two just work very well as little drone type vehicles that can drive around Scorpinox base mode. You know, they even look like something, some sort of like security drone that would patrol a base. So yeah, it works. I like the fact that we can get this base vehicle in multiple colors. Here's Rorichi and Fast Track connected together in their modulator configurations. Just a modified version of the vehicle mode with their little airlock ramps out. And you do need to move their little seats from the back of their heads to the top of their arms so that they have clearance. Now, obviously, this isn't the intended use for them. The intended use is for them to hook onto you know larger bases, but just thought it'd be neat to show them connected together. Maybe this could be like a battle formation, you know, pew, 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 rotate right here in the center. I don't know. Here's a shot of the weaponizer mode being paired here with the Decepticon Battle Charger runabout. And I gotta say, the black on gold is a very good look for these two. Now, just like Fast Track, this does create a very back heavy configuration. And you can see I've got Runabout really bracing himself to stand up because if I'm not careful, he'll just flop backwards. So, just something to be aware of. This won't work swimmingly with figures that might have some weak ankle or knee joints, they're gonna wanna just fall backwards. And since we're twinning today, here is Fast Track with Run Amuck, the other battle charger. This works out really well because you have mold mates and mold mates together. And honestly, this looks really cool. I would love to see a scene like this on the Netflix series or you know some form of animation that shows the battle chargers and these two drones just gearing up together and just going hard on some Autobots. Because these two guys, they're not normally taken very seriously. They're like you know, throwaway thug characters for the most part. So it'd be great if, you know, the Autobots think they're in for an easy win and then these two just link up with Fast Track and Black Ricci and just start wreaking havoc. I would love to see that. All right, here's the spear mode. You can see Black Ricci's on the left, Fast Track's on the right. And I still think Ricci makes a better looking spear. His color is just, they look a little less silly for what's supposed to be like an actual serious weapon. Now, one thing that I didn't notice until putting him in this configuration is that this elbow joint on my Black Ricci is a lot looser than it is on Fast Track. And I didn't even notice it until there was actually like enough weight and leverage to kind of make a difference. So it's unfortunate because that makes this point right here very loose, very prone to flopping over, which won't be too much of a problem with the way Scorponok holds it. But when you're trying to get a smaller character to hold on to it, it's just, it's going to fall over. Unless you maybe get it to, you know, lean this way a little more. So that's disappointing. It's not quite as uh, sturdy as the original version, but not the end of the world. Here's our mandatory shot of Scorponok wielding Black Warichi as a spear. And, uh... <laughs> Very disappointed to realize that that floppy handle has more of an impact on this than I thought it would. So you can see the way I got him, you know, being held right now. If we want to turn it sideways though to show off the design better, this starts flopping over. And no amount of even like careful, like very slight touch posing helps. It it, it can't hold itself up under the gravity. So that is a real shame <laughs> because I was. Probably planning on displaying this guy in his spear mode to be held by Scorponok. I don't know if I want to do that anymore because this looks terrible. That's really disappointing, man. <laughs> Come on. You had one job. The whole reason you exist is to be a spear and you can't even do that right. So, disappointing. Hate to see it. Um, at least if I pose it this way, the handle stays straight. For double the fun, here's Scorponok dual wielding his two spears. So, you know, double the tyrant spear, double the death. So the plus side of all this is we get to have quite a bit of fun with these accessories. If 
only that handle was more sturdy. There might be something I can do to tighten it up. I don't know, like clear nail polish or something, but I just hope that you guys don't end up with such a dud copy because that just really put a damper on my spirits to find out that he doesn't work very well as a spear. And then finally we get to Black Orici's robot mode. And to me, this is where he really shines because he just looks awesome. Just this shiny little six-wheeled mech type robot. Blasters on his hands. Of course, that's just kind of the default placement for him. You can place one or both of them on top of his shoulders. He's got his little blade that he can wield, like a little short sword or dagger. Lots of stuff you can do with this guy. And again, the gold plastic, gold paint just lines up very well. They don't match exactly. The paint's a bit shinier, but they look really cool. Of course, they still scare the heck out of me when it comes to whether or not this toy's gonna hold up in 10 years, but that's a worry for another time. Right now, I just really like the look of this guy, and I think overall he looks better than Fast Track. But I'll let you decide that. Here is Fast Track. And I don't know, for me, the colors just work a little better together. I like the fact that there's some consistency between like the red eyes and the shade of blue used for the little chest windows there, which I still don't know what purpose the chest windows serve because they never actually really get used as windows in the vehicle mode, but whatever. It looks okay. Now, personally, I prefer to put this guy in the same configuration that most of his like, renders and packaging have him, which is this blaster removed from his hand and placed on his shoulder like so, and then have his little dagger weapon be put in this hand. Just to make him look, I don't know, a little more combat ready. You know, he's got his melee weapon, he's got the range weapon, then he's got a little supplemental range weapon right there. Go ahead, do the same thing for fast track, just so they match and look cool. Still have a bit of a clearance issue with the edge of the weapon and the wrist there, so you have to have it turn kind of sideways. But yeah, they work pretty well. Now this is the, uh, the molding difference that I pointed out earlier. See, their heads are nearly identical, except Fast Track has these extra little antennae off to the side, whereas he doesn't have that. And that's very interesting. It's like one of the most mild retools you'll ever see. It's almost like they just like chopped them off, but there's no sign that there was ever any plastic attached here, so it looks like two separate pieces that were molded, just very similar to each other, and it's just the back of the head here, so that makes it easy. So, these guys, I, I dig them. They're really cool to have. My final thoughts on Black Orici. I absolutely love the way he looks. Again, I think his colors just work better than Fast Tracks do. Fast Tracks dark gray and orange is just kind of eye searing. Like, yes, it's true that Scorponok also possesses dark gray and orange on his body, but they're used more as accents than the main colors, his main colors being green and purple. Which, it's worth pointing out, the purple on Rurichi is actually intentionally shaded to somewhat color match Scorponok's purple. The original Black Rishi toy had a much darker shade. So just a little bit of trivia there. Now, the one thing that really holds this release back, at least my copy, because I can't speak for every copy out there, is that loose elbow joint. It's not loose enough to be an issue in robot mode when there's not much weight on it. But in the spear mode, like, the whole thing just falls apart. Scorponok can barely wield it without it looking silly, and a small figure is just not going to be able to use it. It's just going to fall over, so... <laughs> that is a huge disappointment. I, I pray that's just my copy. If anyone else owns it, let me know how yours is. I gotta say, I'm having terrible, terrible luck with loose joints on toys lately. <laughs> like, my Bumblebee has a loose shield, my Trailbreaker had arms that can't even stay up. It's been bad. I have no matter of luck with picking these things out. Now his spear mode does suffer from the same fatal flaws fast tracks in that the head and like chest piece isn't used at all. So you either have to just toss it to the side, store it somewhere, or just inconspicuously plug it onto Scorponok somewhere, I don't know, on the back of his arm or something. Yeah, you gotta get creative there because unlike all the other weaponizers, he actually has a mode where not all of his parts are used, and that's really disappointing. So now that I've given my two cents on Black Orici, it's time for me to ask, what do you guys think of this toy? Was he on your radar at all to pick up? 
Do you see him as a worthy companion to Scorponok and Fast Track? Or is he too redundant for you? You don't like the base mold? Any and all feedbacks always welcome in the comment section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the brand new Transformers Generation Selects Black Warichi. Hopefully we'll see him again in an inevitable Black Zarek review. Nudge, nudge, Hasbro and Takara. And with all that said, I will see you next time.